today we're painting a Tao devil fish. So I'm showing the clipping and the assembly today. This is also the point where you'd want to paint the interior, but I didn't do it on this model this time. So continuing with the assembly, trying to take care of some mold lines, uh, doing some priming. Here's a kind of a tricky part that I encountered when trying to put together the front uh, burst cannon. The problem is with these parts that are movable. You still want them to be movable later, but you also need to paint them so that they still look good. So I just painted it and glued it together and we'll worry about it later. So here's another model that uh, didn't quite fit together as well as I could, so I put a bunch of glue and then used clothespins to keep it together. Try to hold the shape. So continuing on, we have some more side panels that don't quite fit, but uh, more worryingly, these uh, engine blocks, they really did not. So in this case, I did a series of steps of uh, priming and filling and sanding until it was somewhat smooth. Here you can see I'm using the glue and sanding and then priming, and then when I sand, I can go against the primer and just see where I still have any high spots. When you're fairly happy with the smoothness, then you can take it out and switch gray because I don't have an airbrush. I wanted to have a little Easter egg in this model, so I took the Tau head and uh, glued it to the bottom of the top turret. He'll be uh, peeking out at us later. So we've uh, sprayed the whole model, now I'm just going back in and uh, picking out the black parts right now. A lot of what I've shown in this video is just a single first coat, but uh, I always end up doing at least two thin coats. A lot of the painting I do is like the box art. Unfortunately, here this is the bottom of the model and the uh, box art doesn't really show what's going on down here, so I just sort of guessed. So that was the more experimental part of the painting video. Um, in this case, I've got kind of an old, um, very thick bristled brush and I'm taking undiluted paint and just kind of stippling it into the model. Um, this was an intentional choice to both start when highlights off from the Corax Gray spray paint and to provide some texture. I wanted these panels to look like they were, you know, right out of the foundry. So I'm going to continue with stippling and uh, try a little bit lighter colors, add some white to uh, bring the highlights up onto the sides here. So I did the base painting for the white, uh, the black, I think that was a bad in the black from uh, Citadel. This is uniform gray from Army Painter and we're just going to go around the model and pick up all of the gray parts. Here you can see it's a lot easier to see the texture of the model that I put on with the stippling. Whenever it got a bit too rough, I did go in and uh, sand it down a little bit. Now we can continue on with assembly. We are just going to glue this so that we can put in the engine ducts. I don't know what this thing is. Continuing to provide highlights. This is the Ultra One Gray, but adding uh, matte white into it to bring more highlights up. Continuing to go around the model with more and more highlights, adding more and more white to the paint mix. This is the land carrier. I put primed and painted in black. I didn't really put much detail into it. So the one problem with adding the stippling effect for kind of armor texture is it does kind of build up a little bit. So I did sand it down just a tiny bit. Now for the fun part, we're going to be doing some oil washes or at this moment right now we're going to be doing oil panel lining. This uh, is just oil paint with a bit of mineral spirits, nothing special, just kind of the Bob Ross brand. It's 
very satisfying just to tap into a panel line and have it just capillary all the way around it. For my model, I tried to make a little bit more like the box art, so I used a brown oil paint. Uh, you could use a black or anything you wanted. I think brown is really kind of showing a little bit of the dirty, grungy look that I'm going for. Not uh, not gross, but just that it's uh, been in use for a while. For some of the larger black areas, I just kind of drenched it, and when we eventually get to the cleanup phase, I'll just kind of scrub those over, but uh, give them an overall dirty look. And after letting it dry a little bit, I think I waited about 40 minutes or so, um, now I do the cleanup. This is really just a Q-tip and some mineral spirits. Q-tip kind of wears away, so there's probably a better way of doing this, or maybe just using a brush or something like that. But I did want to uh, absorb some of the oil paint. As mentioned earlier, I've got the uh, pilot screaming guy here. Um, he's kind of peeking out of the top turret. And I'm going to paint his face now. My Tau skin recipe is the thing, followed by Army Painter Blue Wash and then Rust Gray. On to more details. This is now painting the windshields and some of the lenses. Really, I'm just going from a darker to lighter blue and then go back and provide some kind of glinting highlights on uh, different areas. Again, I'm just kind of following the box art and it appears to be that there's kind of like the drone's use of lenses all around this top turret. So now it's time to put some uh, decals on, uh, nothing special, my silicone and water and a little bit of vinegar and then once I get them on there I use water and a little bit of alcohol which will help evaporate it. Of course, for me, the hardest part is to get them into the right spot with a paintbrush. But I just move around, um, look at the box art. Um, unfortunately, it seems like not all the details of everything on the box art is available, but uh, I just use other things in their place when I come across them. The landing gear, now fully painted, are uh, glued in place as the next step. Some additional final touches. I've gone through and I'm going to take some of the Ultholin Gray, a little bit of white, you know, the highlight color that's in the area, and kind of tap it around the decals just to make it look a little bit weathered um, and not as crisp and new because the whole model isn't crisp and new. effects on some of the raised edges. I used uh, Citadel's Gorthor Brown and I'm just going to trace and put in some dots, make some lines, anything just where where you would see the most wear and tear, you know, if this thing's uh, flying around the country, maybe in some branches or something. And with that, the model's done. The uh, only thing left to do is to uh, put some drones in the Drone Spot. Thanks for watching.